hi guys my name is michael you're welcome to my channel this is mike boat fashion tutorial if you're just joining this channel for the first time please i want you to like share comment and subscribe to this channel this channel is a fashion um channel where we'll be teaching a lot in fashion designing and debunking a lot of fashion errors so okay in our last um time we actually learned how to draft a pattern for bodies we learned how to draft a pattern for bodies so today actually we are going to be testing for fit of this pattern we have drafted because regularly we took a, a measurement it was first the measurement then we repeated this measurement into the pattern so right now we are going to be um, tracing our patterns cutting into fabric and also doing a test for fit of this um, pattern we have drafted we're we'll going on a quick break by the time we are back we'll be starting right away please don't leave that down Alright, welcome back. Okay, at this point in time, we drafted the bodice in our last video, and this is the, the bodice we drafted in our last video. Now, for this bodice we have drafted, it's actually a perfect um, bodice we've drafted. However, after drafting this bodice, there are still rooms for alterations. If there are alterations we might want to do on our bodice part, and there are still rooms for alterations, ranging from the fact that, okay, we could actually increase the length of our ham hole if we want to okay just from this part we could go a little more in you know to this point okay we could actually increase the length of our bodies if we want to however we should be careful not to take out of this across chest because this is the actual across chest of this model's measurement okay at the back also there's also a guideline now you know how we got this before this is our, this is our angle 45 degree we actually divided this into two that's from this point to this point into two and we put it here and it was through that point we got our curve however we can still add like three eighths of an inch in front of it also this is also like a guideline to help us we mustn't we must be careful not to exceed this three eighths of an inch we have here but we can go in between we can go between the middle now let's however note that let's however note that the front arm hole is usually slightly um, bigger or longer in length to the back arm hole. Okay, I'm going to erase this one for to just um, you know terminate any form of confusion. I don't want to confuse us. I don't want us to be confused about this. Okay, so when we when we plus this like we got the measurement of this from this point to this point we divided into two and that's what we, we kept here then we put a three eighths of an inch in front of it also so this is just a guideline so however if we are actually making a curve to this point it can be on this line it can be in between it can be on this line however it should not exceed this line so you don't have okay so in the front we we have more hollow parts in the arm hole than the back okay and the front arm hole is slightly um you know bigger in length than the back arm hole all right so at this point in time we're going to be tracing our pattern remember this is our front pattern and this is our back pattern so i have another paper here with me i'm going to be placing under this to trace out our patterns I'm placing this right in front of this. So, having my pins, I just want to use my pins to hold them in place so they don't move around while I trace. So at this point in time, I've pinned my pattern in place. So right now, I'll start tracing, okay? It's as I trace, just take note of the parts I am tracing out of this pattern.
body parts of the pattern i'm going to use my my hands my free hands to smoothen out the curve so we are done tracing the the front however i want to add seam allowances i want to add seam allowances we'll be using to join this front together okay so i'm going to be adding seam allowances i won't be adding seam allowances at the hem at the armhole and at the neck right now where i just need to put my seam allowance right now is just at the side seam and on the shoulder okay at the side seam and on the shoulder because we're actually testing for fits using calico we'll be testing for fit so I'm, I'm putting half inch seam allowance here okay i have half inch seam allowance here so i'm going to fold this up when i fold this i'm just going to trace into this a bit so it gives me that perfect shape when i cut It gives me that overlapping shape when I cut. Okay, so I'll be adding my seam allowances to the side seam. So this point. half inch seam allowance to this point half inch seam allowance my dark legs to this point okay. then over here how about it because this is a call so I have to follow through So we let's try to true this up. All right. So at this point, I would cut out. has been traced out so what I do is this I'll draw this to indicate that this is my center front okay and this line and arrow you see here what it means that it means that this will be cut on fold the fabric will be cut on fold okay to be cut on fold 
and this is my green line and this is my green line okay at this moment we are done with cutting our front um, pattern now with repetition with what i have here repetitions of what i have here now this line we have here this angle what it signifies is that it means cut unfold okay you cut unfold okay you cut on for what that means is that you're going to double the fabric when we get there you are going to see it okay and this is our green line showing the direction of which the material should go okay the direction of which the the fabric or the material you're using would go all right so at this point in time we're going to go to the back let's cut let's trace and cut the back um pattern piece okay, actually for the back this is what we do right now we're going to take one inch out Okay, this one inch, the purpose of taking out this one inch beside the back of the, the pattern is to help us have allowance for zip. Okay, this one inch is going to be for zip allowance. Okay, I don't want to take it that far because the bodice is not so, so long. It's actually not a dress, but the bodice. <clears throat> so this one inch actually we are taking out right now is a zipper allowance okay because while we are testing for fit we'll be we'll be putting a zip there to help us so at this moment what we do next is bring our pattern here place our center back by that one inch so allow for zipper allowance so at this moment what we do now is to pin up so at this moment we're going to be tracing the back remember i've left one inch allowance for the zipper allowance so it's now remaining our darts our dart is left to be traced out mind you for the back that you don't you don't have to come down there's no bust at the back so it's only in front that you have to come out by one inch and one inch down one inch outside the bust to release fullness towards the bust so at this point now mind you while using this tracing wheel it actually has its advantage and disadvantage for those of us that that can afford getting and what's it called self-healing mats it's always good to have that but for now i don't have a self-healing mat and this is what it does to my my table it actually scars my table that's what tracing wheel does okay so if you, you can actually afford getting self-healing mats you know to do this work it's actually a great um, instrument to have as regarding pattern making so at this point in time i want to remove my pins and redraw the pattern I I traced out. The, at this point, I've been able to trace my back um, pattern, and I've been able to put the side seam allowance, and this is the zipper allowance, okay, for the center back because this piece right now is actually the the center back, okay. This is my green line. This is my CB, okay, which is the center back. That's a CB which is my center back. So at this moment right now, see what I want to do to this neckline right now, in order to have a very nice um, seam at the back, seam allowance at the back, in order for it to lay flat, okay? As I cut and sew, I'm just fold, folding this inwardly, then I'll just trace this neckline as it were, okay? So, you can see what it gave to me. You don't want to cut straight okay because as this is folded inwardly it's going to lie flat okay and i'll repeat the same thing here also taking this inward okay i just want to crease crease my allowance then use my tracing wheel okay so it gives me this so at this moment, it's just for me to cut out. So 
I'm going to be cutting out my my back cotton piece. For the back shoulder allowance, I folded this inwards. Then I will just trace the neckline a bit. You know, so we'll just have that perfect cut by the time we are cutting. Okay, you can see you can see the way it appears on the seam allowance. So by the time I sew this, it's not going to okay be a mess. my back and this is my front this is my back and this is my front so the only places I added seam allowances were um, the side and the shoulder point okay the side and the shoulder that's where I added seam allowance I didn't add and this has seam allowance at the back also this is for the, your zipper allowance okay because we're gonna be putting zipper into this and just to um, remove any form of confusion, remember we came down by one inch here. So I reduced the dark legs and I cleaned the previous one, the initial one. The same thing applies to this part. I brought down the darts by one inch and I reduced the darts leg, okay? So I cleaned the first one to remove any form of confusion. Now it's time to cut. We are gonna be cutting these patterns as we have them right now. So I have um, a little calico fa fabric here which is going to serve I have my my patterns on the fabric I want to use to test for fit actually this is a calico fabric okay so I have my front pattern here mind you where I'm placing my front front pattern is on a fabric that is folded so this place is on fold actually this part of the fabric is on fold this part of the fabric is on fold so I'm going to be pinning up It has to be very flat on the fabric. That's why it's a flat pattern making. Flat flat pattern actually. It has to be flat. When you are pin, you should be pinning on both sides together. Alright guys, at this point we have been able to pin our patterns to our fabric which we are going to be using to test our fabric. So at this point in time, the next stage is to cut, okay? from the pattern we drafted this time around we want to transfer these darts now to the fabric there are several ways of which we can try of, of there are several ways of transferring um darts into fabric you know there are, there's a tailor tack whereby you use thread and needle to transfer um, using this awl also is also a good method to transfer that into fabric or i have one other method i you know that works for me and Watching this, you can you could actually adopt this also. So I got um, a pearl head um, pin. 
so i'm actually punching them into the dart holes the dart points okay i'm punching them into the dart points i'm punching them into the dart points okay so after point, punching them into the dart point i turn this over and i just make my markings over there from the dark point, I make my markings. I make my markings. Okay. Now well, you can see what I've done here. So I could just still remove this. Now I'm actually making use of a pencil because um, this is actually a fabric we're using to test for fits for the normal fabric you use for your garment. It's advisable you use erasable markers or chalk or better still. There's some wax um, wax pencils in the market of which when you iron on it's it erases, it takes it takes the wax off the fabric, okay? So because this is a test piece fabric that I'm using this, okay? So I want to bring my embossed that into the fabric. Okay, for my boss that I just think I don't really need to um, I don't really need to put pins at the legs. I'll just notch. This notch shows me where that leg is. Okay. So I'll make my markings. Remove the pin. Then from the part place I notched. I'll just connect the points to the notched points. I'll connect the points to the notch point. So I'll do the same to the reverse side. Put in my my pearl head pins, punching them through my dark points. Okay. So at this moment, what I will do is this. I will actually remove my pins from this side. So I could repeat the same process at this side. Okay, just marking my dot points. So I'll just remove my my pins. Connect my dark points. For my boss that I'll do the same thing. So 
そうですマークはポイントを持つ。From there, I'll take his straight line to the notched point. This is what I have. Now, this is what I'll be stitching as my dot. So, this is what I have. Alright? So, I'm going to be doing the same thing at the back. Now, for this, my back here, I would not be tracing this out. Like I said, I said this is a very small dot. So while I will sew this, I will just ease this in. I would rather not sew the dots, but it's a very small dot. If I have dots of about half an inch, 0.75 inches, I can sew. But for this, this is actually very small. So I will just ease it in while, sew, while sewing. Then for this back dot, I will do the same. I did in the first dots. So at this moment, I've been able to trace my dot lines into um, my fabric. So this is my center back, okay? Where it's going to be having the zipper, and this is my center front. Okay, so at this moment, I'll be taking this to my sewing machine to go sew up the darts and the side seam. Let's go. We want to sew the darts starting from the boss darts right now. Okay, I'm matching the notches together. Now this is my dart tip, or my dart point. Okay, so I just take a back stitch, following my line to my dart point. This is my dart point. Mind you, you are not back stitching at the dark points. Okay, you won't back stitch at the dark point. This is how you you sew up a dart. You don't back stitch a dark point. This is how you sew up a dart. Okay, you knot severally. Cuts the thread. You don't want to have that tacky. You don't want to have that tacky look in front. Okay? You don't want to have that tacky look in front. This is what I mean by that. You don't want to have that tacky look in front. You don't. Uh, at this moment, guys, um, I've been able to stitch the darts. You can see the darts. For the front, okay. Now, uh, this is the dart for the back, okay. So, with right sides facing, I will be stitching the dart, the, the bodies together, okay. So, I'll be stitching the, the shoulders and the side seams together. You know, I told you that I will not be stitching the shoulder dart for the back because it was quite small, okay? If we have bigger shoulder that would have stitched about three inches down. So, but this, we are gonna be easing this um, together. We are gonna be easing this in. So we don't need to sew the dots, stitch the dots there. Okay, I'll be sewing. All right, guys. At this moment, we have been able to stitch the shoulders together, okay? The front shoulder and the back shoulder together. At this moment, we want to, you know, sew the side seams together. However, there's one thing I want us to note. When we want to sew the side seam, 
this bus that has to be sewn facing down. Okay, you don't want to sew this facing up this way. It has to be sewn facing down. That's for both sides. All right, let's go sew. I'm looking at my mother right now. You can see she's putting on the the toal. Okay. And on this toile, looking at it very well, you can see it really fits. Looking at the shoulder slope, we have the right shoulder slope. It's not saggy. Okay. Looking at the shoulder slopes, they are the same. Quite symmetrical. This is the bust that. This is the waist that. You can see how fitted this is. So by the time we'll be working on um, a course called contouring, this hollow parts of the garments, okay, will be all held together to be contoured. We will not have the space you are seeing here. So right now, as it is, as we have constructed this, the garment actually fit, fits um, perfectly well. The pattern fits perfectly well. Okay, so these are some of the things you are supposed to, these are some of the skills you are supposed to have as a fashion designer because as time goes on, you train your eyes, you know, to know what fits, what works. Okay, looking at the armhole, the armhole is perfect. It's not saggy. Neither is it more than the ham hole um, space, according to it. The same thing applies to the front, okay? The ham hole here, it's normal, okay? So by the time we attach a sleeve to it, we'll, we'll have a better view. So at this point in time, it's, it's wonderful. We actually have a wonderful piece right here. Alright guys, we have come to the end of this video. Um, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up for this video as we bring more in our next episodes. Okay, um, we have been able to test for feet of uh, a torso, okay, foundation of a bodies. But in our next video, we are actually going to be testing for feet also for um, a bodice with a waistline this time around. Please, till I come your way again, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until my next time, do have a good time and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.